Before we get into the video today, I just want to give a quick shout out to one of our sponsors, Gnostic TV. Gnostic TV is ancient wisdom reimagined. This is a Netflix for those who are spiritually curious and want a place to go where there is no censorship. I personally am doing a whole series on Gnostic TV called The Esoteric Explorer, where I am providing exclusive content to Gnostic. Gnostic TV is a host to all sorts of different content creators, many of whom are your old favorites. If you would like to check out Gnostic TV, there is a link down in the description box below. Hello, you guys. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce, and I am so excited today because we are going to talk about a very, very fascinating topic, one that we're, we're all <laughs> interested in, whether we want to admit it or not, and that is the occult. And of course, I've got my friend Jay from Spiritually Raw, as well as Gnostic TV on with me today. How are you doing today, Jay? I'm good, Bryce. How are you? Good. I'm good. so excited. I cannot wait to discuss this with you. Before, before we get into it, guys, the reason why we're talking about the occult today is because Jay Shanti from Aquarius Rising Africa and myself, along with some of our other friends, have been working on something behind the scenes that we have not been sharing information about, but we're ready to start talking about it. We have created a panel, basically, of people who were raised in the um, elusive, we'll just say the establishment since we're on YouTube, and then people who have survived that occultic lifestyle and, of, and other people who have um, researched it are big researchers. And we've arranged this like panel for this like in-depth, interactive, kind of interactive like experience to understand deeper into the, to, into the occult. So Dan, I'm gonna let you take it away before we get into the subject at hand about this yeah, information for yeah, this really event. Well, you know, as always, Bryce, thanks for bringing me into your world. Thank you very, very much. So yeah, everybody. So uh, this, we're so excited about this event that you and Shanti are putting together where all of us are kind of pulling together, but it's tales of survival from the dark side, right? I mean, this is just what happens. Tales of survival from the dark side. So um, we're going to let you know how to access that. But a uh, real quick, you know, every time I was always taught to come bearing gifts. So anyway, we start off with a gift here today for everybody. In the links below, you're going to see um, a link for Gnostic. Everybody can go ahead and register for free watch all we got over a thousand videos on there you don't have to put up a credit card or anything just enjoy the experience and then uh about the event that's going to be coming up listen this is going to be something you absolutely won't want to miss so text to my number if you got it and text the event yeah. okay and i'll send you a coupon code for it okay so when you when you do it so you can pre-register for it so that's going to be definitely one for the errors on this one so bryce so free membership for everybody no credit card and also don't forget to text event and I'll send you a coupon code. Okay, you guys, all that will be down in the description box below. So you'll see a link to Gnostic TV, over a thousand videos. That's wild. Yeah, it's crazy. It's grown yeah. so much. So you've got the, I got the Esoteric Explorer series on there. So you guys know a lot of stuff that I can't talk about on the YouTube. I take it over to Gnostic because I don't have to worry about censorship there. We've also got the Esoteric Health and Wellness series. So you guys that are interested in using the body, the, the traditional ways of spirituality to understand yourself, that's there. And of course, so many other people. Shanti is going to have a series there. So many people. I and mean, of course, we know that Shanti from Aquarius Rising Africa, she's kind of become the liaison for a lot of people who are whistleblowers. And so she's been able to meet some very extraordinary people I think she's kind of paid a price for it. As a lot of them have a lot of attacks, all that kind of stuff. But um, th nonetheless, she pushes forward and we've put this together. And I'm so excited because not only do we have people who are survivors who have lived this, but we also have our friends, Rob and Mike, which you guys know from the Son of Sam Chronicles. Um, Mike comes on my show all the time. He's so fascinating because he started studying the Son of Sam, as you guys know, which is a big serial killer um, case in New York in the 70s that has huge ties to the occult into the establishment and so he started to break down occultic practices just from reflect and of course he's from New York where this incident happened and so we're going to have Rob and Mike on this panel with a few other people who didn't grow up in these groups 
but learn so much about them just from researching stuff and having critical thinking and, and common sense. And so that's going to be exciting, not only to hear from people who experienced it and lived it, but people who actually studied it yeah. and, and, and can teach us some things because, you know, it's crazy, Jay. It's like, I think we know this. And I think our viewers know this, but everything is a spiritual, a spiritual friction, isn't it? A hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, you know, we, you know, I think, a lot of what happens for people is they get this, you know, there, there seems to be division, right? Like, you know, the light is always one, the dark is going to lose the dark, you know, and, and look, the reality is, or my reality anyway, is I, I see that, okay, look, you know, I got both parts within me and now I got to really balance this shit out and make sure that yeah. I don't go too far to one side or the other. Cause that's where things get really messed up. You know yeah. what I mean? So if you get, if you get, I mean, how many times have you heard, um, you know, people chanting the light is one, the light is one, the light is one, and they're in the darkest places of their lives. You know what I mean? And and I'm not saying that to dilute anybody's belief system on it. All I'm saying is let's be very pragmatic about it. You know, we, unless someone shows something different, we have, we have inside of us a, a, a Christ, an antichrist, a devil, a God, a, a yin and a yang, whatever you want to, you know, whatever culture, I mean, throw it around there, but I think you can see the common denominator. We have both sides of us in there. So, you know, I'm personally believing that, you know, if you start to, lean in it's very it's a tricky tricky thing bryce it really is it's a tricky thing then you know you it's the balance right it's like right. you go one far one side to one way or the other and that's where havoc happens so you know and obviously i think for a lot of people they feel like you know it is easier to go let's quote it to the dark side because the path of least resistance let's call it so then that pendulum swings there and it stays there for a minute and then you attract all of that you know what yeah. i mean then you know and then same with the light you you can attract all of that but then you don't have what the dark has to offer which is strength power the parts that protect you for example if you're in a uh fight and someone's beating up your loved one you're going to bring out the darkest parts of yourself to beat the hell out of them the light's not going to help you with that you're not going to say oh bless you i know it's your learning experience you know what i mean yeah. you're not gonna say that shit. you know what i mean well you know? that's actually according to the law of one i love that you said that because according to the law of one and i see this hardcore in the spiritual world and we even see it on youtube jay we've spoken about this um martyrdom martyrdom is not of the light even the light acknowledges the darkness in that like you know for the law of one in order to go to the light side you have to be 51 percent service to others so 49 percent of you can be a total asshole right you know and and so when we, we, we like we, we see that in the yoga world people expect um like yoga teachers to teach for free or they yeah. want us on youtube putting videos out totally without you out for free just to give give to be enslaved <laughs> to their, and then, you know, and so we've gotten this diluted, and I think that's intentional, where people put themselves in a place where they're martyrs, and martyrdom, the law of one is very clear, that martyrdom is of the darkness. If you're not protecting yourself, your lower three chakras, the lower three ones, that's your humanity, which is also your hell, because that's your survival. And everybody's so focused, right, on being up here in the upper chakras, which are the more spiritual ones, that they don't even acknowledge the fact that there are and you see it in bellies, people who have a belly, you know, it manifests in the body too. So if your belly is bigger, then you might want to look down at your lower chakras, what you're ignoring about your own humanity. And yeah. that's the shadow side. Most spirituality is acknowledging the shadow side of yourself, you know, and, and we're not talking about like hurting other people or hurting children. We're talking about like the jealousy, the abandonment issues, the betrayal, the times that you're selfish, you know, that's, that's it, when you are in survival mode, like the, you know, it's like in that airplane, when the, when the airplane, they tell you to put the oxygen mask on yourself first before you help the person beside you, because how good are you if you're not taking care of yourself? You're, 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 you're no good. <laughs> yeah. You're no good. If yeah. you can't provide for yourself, if you can't, so, you know, people, they, people delude that and say, oh, that's self, that's, 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 I need to martyr myself. But no, that type of selfishness is what secures you in order to ground you to to be of service to others and it is it's that polarity right because we're in a polarized planet we really are in a polarized planet, and, and i think we have to acknowledge thing and i think that's the trick that you know as i lit you know we've had so many shows on manifestations and things like that and i and i and as i start to go through it i mean look you know it's just all experience right and but as i start to go through it i realize look you know what it, it's it's honoring whatever you got like whatever you're working with because if we're of whatever God, spirit, or whatever creation we're at, then we're supposed to honor all of it. And we can't discount one part of it or else we're discounting whatever our creator is, right? So, yeah. um, and, and really learning to find that balance. But I think the first part about it is, is acceptance. I got it. 
we all got it. <laughs> we are all we are all the most terrible and nicest human beings at any second of our lives, right? Every one of us. There's I can't I can I don't think I've ever met a person, you know, that I know of, unless they're stuck in a cave and a Buddhist monk that you know, has things that they regret or they wish that they could take back, right? Or things that they said, that's just that dark side of us. You got to let that stuff go. You know, it's, it is what it is. It's it's part of the learning experience. I mean, forgiveness is a big thing in this. And like you said, martyrdom, Bar Bryce, is that a lot of people don't learn to forgive themselves. I mean, you did something. Uh, you know what? I didn't do it. I probably shouldn't have done it that way. Just try not to do it again. You know what I mean? And then you learn and that's it. But just let it go. It's done now. There's just nothing else to do. Well, and if you learn from your mistakes, and are they mistakes? Yeah. Or do they just give you people don't you don't you don't create wisdom by not making mistakes. Right. Well, that's not that's not where wisdom comes from. And you know, it's it's you talk about the monks, you know, in and deep spiritual teachings, the people who are who run off to the caves and remove themselves from society, those people are have disassociated. And that's not good either. You came yeah. here. My, my friend said, Cindy says it the best way. Spirit is what you are. You are. You're already a spirit. But you came here to experience your humanity. You came here to experience a nervous system. You came here to experience fear. You came here to experience jealousy, deceit, and your reaction to that. And yeah, we all make mistakes and react poorly. But then that's how we learn how to course correct and find the wisdom. And we call that the friction. And that's the beautiful thing about being on a polarized planet where there's darkness and light left and right man and female in the sun moon you know there's these different opposing forces because it creates that friction and that friction is how you polish yourself that's how you know, it's um it's my teacher in india we, we, that's how it creates the heat he talks about how how do you clean gold you boil it that's how you you clean that's gold. how you clean the, yeah. you boil it and you you wipe it off so you create that heat heat's not comfortable um we we look at uh the friction if, if we're living in a world where everything is just lollipops and rainbows we would never evolve. You can't, you, and, you, and you can't manifest with that either, because if you think about it, I mean, I want you to think about like when people manifest, I mean, let's be very pragmatic, right? Okay, so let's say you're like, oh, you're playing nicey, nice lollipops and rainbows, but you want something, right? At some point in time, you're, when your back gets pushed up against the wall and you want something, somehow, some way you create that something. We've all been able to pull shit out of wherever and just make it happen. That comes from that place of dark. Okay. Yeah. And it doesn't mean you're a dark being. It doesn't mean you're doing bad things. It just comes from that place of dark where you muster up that, all right, let me go. All right, lead follower, get out of my way. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, it comes from that place. We all have to, you know, because if you want to manifest something, you're not going to just sit in the, you know, you got to come at it with intensity. Intensity comes in from a different place, right? And again, it doesn't, it's just what you do with that intensity. Yeah. Can you use that darkness for good? Right. And exactly. Where, so exactly. Are you using it? That's um, I actually this was a, a metaphor we use in the, the yoga world a lot. A knife. Let's take a knife, for example. A knife is just a knife. You can use it to hurt someone or you can use it to cut up fruit to serve someone. Exactly. Yeah. And with the occult, you know, all occult means is hidden. That's, that's all it means. I think people fear that word, that word, but all it means is hidden. That's all it means. Yeah. And so when you take that and you learn from it, you know, I actually, our friend Hillis, we've, uh, Jay, we've been looking at, um, I, I used him as an example in another video because he's really wise, our friend Hillis, and he's been in the spiritual world for a while. And we, we're, 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 we're doing videos on the lost colony of, of Mew, basically. And we were offline chatting about some research for a show. And I was looking at some books and I had mentioned, oh, there's this book about Mew. We were on the phone. I was like, it's written by this guy. It looks like he's a Freemason. And Hillis goes, oh, well, then it's probably correct information. And even though you guys, people, people, and I love he said that because Hillis understands the wisdom there, right? Even though we see the Freemasons as being bad or they do, they're doing crazy things, what Hillis was saying is no, even though they're doing things in the dark and that's hidden, what they're doing is actually information that's true. The action is different from the information. So just because they yeah. might be doing things in these rituals where they're hurting people, that's not the information. The information is in the action. You control the action. You control your reaction. You control whether you hurt somebody else or not. And given different situations, you're right, Jay. Like if you, if, if I was with my nephew and nieces, you're a parent. If somebody's coming after your child, oh, it's okay. it's on. It 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 doesn't. You're not going to sit there and have a. It's so funny, Jay. I, I actually 
speaking of this, have you seen this whole conversation online, Jay, where the the bear versus man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Catherine and I talked about it and I had put up a video on my Instagram and we were kind of laughing about it because men are like pitching a fit because most women said a bear. And I said, I get it because a bear is, there's nothing personal. A bear is just acting in nature where a man, there's more complex thought, right? So there's more, it can be, anyway. So I put this video up on my Instagram of this girl kind of explaining the same thing about why most women pick the bear. It's not that we don't think men, most men are good people. It's just that men, women are trained from a very young age to, to don't leave the first location it's better to die in the parking lot than be taken you know she kind of went through this all and this guy jay left this comment about how women need to sit and think about this and contemplate the man and it was so hysterical because i was like in a split moment situation where you're having to react you're not going to step back and say wait a minute let me think about this for a second you're just going to react and it was like this because the, the guy said, you know, if we, if we pass it, we need to give the man time to understand and talk to him. And I'm like, dude, like most women know most men are good people. It's just a split decision reaction to protect yourself. Yeah. yeah. And, it's, and, and uh, it's kind of what we're saying. Like if somebody is coming after my nephew or my nieces as little children, you best believe I will. I, it's like mothers are able to pick cars up their children out of nowhere. That energy is going to come from somewhere. Right. Got to. And that's what that's what this occult, if you would, gives you. It gives you the power to be able to survive. It gives you the power to be able to manifest. It gives you the power to be able to protect you, the ones you love. And again, you, you use an existence. I mean, you know, kind of speaking about this uh, masculine, the bear and things like that. There, therein lies another division thing. You know, there's this whole well, the, the, the divine feminine. That was all last year. Now there's this whole divine masculine things going on now. And it's like, it, again, another separation. You yeah. know what I mean? Just can't you just realize that? Look, you know what? We got it all within us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? We got the masculine, we got the feminine, we got the light, we got the dark, we got the everything within us. Why don't we just, you know, instead of just separating people to learn how to work with each other, you, you bring them together to learn how to work with each other. You know, you know yeah. what I mean? It's what you do. It's the merging, and that's the thing. Like, yeah, you're right. I like I because the the you know, the dark side has taken this spectrum of sexuality in one direction when reality it's it's you have both in you even though yeah. i'm a female you know for me my my masculine side would be as a female me be, being able to pay my bills for a male the feminine side would be being emotional and being sensitive that so you have both of those in you so like if you have a right knee issue because knees represent fear of the future right knee issue would be are you afraid of being able to pay your bills left knee issue would be are you afraid you're not going to have love and support in the future so you yeah. see different energies just give you information and it's how you use again it's not the action it's the how you're using the information and so these occultic things like you know there's even elements of yoga that can be considered occultic but it's not bad it's just the, the you, you look at the third and fourth pot, pata of the yoga sutras which is about the cities it's about your consciousness it's about things like levitation and like how to be the mastery over your own body and your I own love that. Love but the first yeah, but the first and second pot is basically are you go is is Patanjali going, listen, you're a human. Human suffering exists. Now let's work with that. And so the first two pot is you're working with your own suffering. You're working with that friction and that develops and moves into a higher understanding of your own consciousness. So like 10 years down the road, you're now looking at the third and fourth pata where you're now having a deeper understanding of both sides of yourself. The yin and the yang. The pranic is the upward rising energy. The aponic is the downward. The sun and the moon work together. Right. You think about like when a baby is, is when a woman gets pregnant, when the sperm hits the egg, there's a light that there's a flash of light. Light happens. You're like, you're that spark of light. But then for nine months, you're in total darkness. You're in total darkness. While you grow from that flash of light that need, so they need each other, right? The, the, the sun will sit on the earth. I mean, we, we need the sun. We know so much about the sun now to, to trigger the DNA, not just our DNA, but plants, water, and then the moon comes out and in that moon cycle there's res restoration that happens when you're sleeping you're integrating you can't you, you one can't exist without the other they just can't not on this planet anyway not in this reality they cannot exist without the other they need each other you know i think we should start a movement today and i'm going to document it here on your show we're the gray workers <laughs> <laughs> the gray workers that's it. Gray workers. That's who we are. That, that I love it. I should tell my friend, Cindy, my friend, Cindy, who she owns the studio that I teach. Uh, I teach twice a week at her. I've, I've known her for years. And she talks about this all the time. She's like, 
you cannot, you absolutely cannot move into light working until you've gone deep into your darkness. Yeah, totally. You have to go down. And that's all this, guys, all these resurrection stories we hear, the Jesus story, the um, Tammuz and Ishtar story, all these resurrection stories. That's what that is, guys. It's not literally about somebody resurrecting from the dead. It's liter It's a metaphor about going deep into hell for those who are Christian. We're taught Jesus went where? To hell for three days. Three days in hell. Yeah. That's a metaphor. Going into your hell to then be able to rise back up again. Into It's that going down. When you come into earth, to human form, you're coming down into your body in order to come right back up again. It's the slingshot, right? When you, a slingshot, when you are going to take a slingshot, for the young kids watching out, think I have super young, there used to be these toys called slingshots where you put a rock or a ball and pull it back and it would sit it forward. It wasn't a video game. It was it was a dark ages toy. Um, but when you let this, you can't just pop the ball forward, right? You had to pull it back first. You had to pull it back in order to let the ball go yeah. forward. I tell my students all the time, we see this in the physical form as well, like with yoga, you know, and, and traditional yoga is extremely hard. It's it's it takes ten years to get through the primary series alone, and so people have get really sore and they lose a bunch of weight and they have all these weird things as their body tries to reprogram itself. And they'll usually, when I see my students start to like lapse back, like they'll be really strong, and then all of a sudden for like a week or a month, they'll just be sloppy on their mat and they're having these pains and these like. Take, they're taking the, even though they're showing up every day, their body's just like kind of falling apart. You know what? I know, I know they're about to have a breakthrough that yeah. always happens. And then like a week to a month later, all of a sudden they propel forward and their body just opens up. And all of a sudden things are that always, it's always darkest before the dawn. It is. It is. And the other thing too, is like, if you think about it, like people who are struggling because they haven't given themselves the chance to explore that side of themselves. Because you know what? When you don't and you don't, okay, so don't go there, don't go there, don't go there. You hear a lot of that or however that's ingrained in your mind and you won't go to those places to the depths of your hell. When you're just all quote unquote light, if you would, you're not going to see it coming. You see what yeah. I'm saying? So you're not going to be prepared for it. So when it comes at you, it's going to come at you like a Mack truck. I mean, it is going to boom. It's going to knock you down. And then you're going to be like, well, you know, why God? Why whatever? <laughs> you know, because I mean? you didn't see it coming. You have to learn to protect yourself, not only from external forces, but from yourself. Mm -hmm. You have to learn to protect yourself from yourself internally, too. You have to learn these these different dynamics so you can understand okay well oh, that's a part of me i don't like let me about you know what i mean let me let me bring it Pull back it and and these, are, these are i don't know why people don't explore this more but they well, really need i to. think that's intentional we have this thing called toxic positivity nowadays yeah. and we see this a lot in like the fake spiritual world where people are like yeah. only happy thoughts well that's not spirituality because here's the thing you guys like your your shadow side your weakness your whatever you're dealing with your anger your whatever it is everybody's different if, if you ignore it it's just gonna fester bigger yeah well it does and but if you actually look at it and present it and acknowledge it what are you doing you're presenting it to the light yeah so yeah you doing. totally are you know and, and, and it's really good to like you know we have a discipline me and april like you know like look you know we're, we're married we're in a relationship we work together all day long so you know it's, it's gonna happen <laughs> right i it's understand that right? absolutely but we but we we have a catch and release philosophy which is you know whatever you got on your mind say it real quick release it everything's good get it out of your system and be done with it and move on and we do that super fast so like when we get in those moments of like you know what I mean? It's like, boom, we say it, you know, there's no attachment to either one of it because you have to release that. So many people, they bite, you know, bite my lip. No, don't bite your lip. If you need, if you don't feel like you want to say it in front of someone, go in a corner and say it outside, then just yell it out. You got to let that stuff go. Because like you said, Bryce, it's going to, it's going to fester and fester and fester. And it's going to be like a volcano. Just wait for it. Yeah. Or hopefully you don't wait for it and fix it, you know, and get ahead of it. And the heavier it gets too, the more of a magnet it becomes. So you start yeah. to attract people. Like that's why women, you know, you look at women, especially who've been in like bad relationships. It's one after the other. The woman's a common denominator because there's something in herself that she hasn't acknowledged to heal yet. And so that's what the universe is trying to do. It's trying to get you to pay attention to things that you need to work on. So you need to refine. And it's, it's definitely, you know, it's, it's, it's that friction. And it's interesting too, the more, you know, my teacher in India would say like yoga is you learning to control your own mind. So yoga to 
Satoshi Nirodaha, which is the second sutra, the first potty, you learn to control your own mind. And so I had a student even say this to me the other day, you know, like, and we'll take the physicality of exercise and then metaphor to your life, you know, the heaviness, the pain, the, the friction of, of exercise, the uncomfortableness. One of my students was like, I realized in the middle of class today that I don't have to do what my mind says to do. But what she's been doing is she's been settling in to the, the, the heaviness, the burning sensation of her body, listening to the negotiations of her mind, and instead breathing into it and settling into it. So we take that metaphor, that tool of exercise being a spirituality and putting it into our world and being able to take everything in, we start to notice that we actually need the darkness in order to propel us into the light. We need both. We, we have to you're right. Like we're the yin and the yang. It's, it's, we yeah. are both. There's not one person. That's why I can't stand sainthood in the Catholic church. I can't. It's weird. It's weird. It's weird. There is <laughs> no, there is no human being yeah. that is, is, is completely perfect in every way. It, that's just not, that's not why we, we came here to be messy. We came yeah. to be messy. Um, I, I stand, tell, tell my classes all the time. I hate that human is a noun. Yeah. Human should be a verb. We're humaning right now. And this is part of mm -hmm. it. We're humaning. And you you can't, you know, if you go for a run, if you're running, if you're, you're running or swimming, there's going to be energy and effort and discomfort in that. You know that by the action of the verb. So if we take human and make it a verb, spirit is the noun. That's what you are. But your spirit is humaning right now. We know there's that friction should be welcomed. It's not wrong. It's not bad. It's a lesson. And that refinement of going into that uncomfortable area of darkness, that shadow side, is what propels you more into the... And it gives you hum humility as well. You yeah. know, when people to accept that, you become humble. It really does. You know, I, I, I went to, I took a trip to India before I went there so I could understand the language. I watched these Indian videos on with subtitles. And uh, so I was like, I could just kind of get my dialect down, right? And um, so anyways, watching one of these, I think it may have been the Bhagavad Gita or something, um, but it was one of the more spiritual ones, right? But in there was, uh, you know, like uh, God Shiva or Vishnu or something, uh, collaborating with a demon, yeah. if you would, to help offset a darker demon <laughs> they were working together you know what i mean it was like they were working together the good and the bad i mean this is this is all like you know all this stuff was here to teach us something right so it's not like a cartoon it's like literally saying this is one god of the universe if you would saying look god of the underverse whatever you want to call it or dark side let's work together because we got a bigger problem over here you know what i mean and and they work together it was really you know it's fascinating to see how, how all of that is acknowledged and you see when you go to places like that um you know, you look at uh, Kali, right? You know, the goddess Kali. Let me just put it, you know, kind Kali of is, word, right? Stepping yeah. on someone's throat with a tongue out and a knife there. But Kali, you know, yeah. It's all about protection, right? Yes. When she's, the Kali energy would be, people refer to the Kali energy in the Western world as like Mother Mary. The, yeah. the toughness of Kali too. And I will say, that's one thing I love about Hinduism actually, is that demon is short for demonstrator. So if you see demons as just demonstrators, teachers... They don't, they lose their power. They and that, power, yeah. the Ramayana is one of my favorite with, uh, with Hanuman yes. and, uh, you know, Ram marries Sita, uh, Sita gets taken by Ravana, who's this 10 headed demon she's taken. So, so Ram hires Hanuman. The, he's my favorite of all the Hindu is the monkey God to go and find Sita. He finds her Ravana has 10 heads. You cut one head off. Another one goes back. He's a demon that can't be defeated. And so Hanuman finds Sita and he realizes he can't just kidnap Sita and bring her back to Ram. He has to actually face off with Hanuman. He has to figure out a way to destroy um, Ravana, Han Hanuman to restore Ravana. Well, we think this is just a mythological story about this monkey god and the Ram and Sita and this tin headed demon. No, this is a metaphor of you. Ram is God, Sita is your soul, Ravana is your ego, and Hanuman is your courage. It takes courage to face off, to return Sita back to God. And so Hanuman didn't just sneak off and, and hide from Ravana and take Ra No, because he knew that, that, that she would just get kidnapped again. So he had to face off. He takes that courage to look that darkness in the eyes. And, and, you know, and so that's one of my favorite uh, Hindu stories is because it's acknowledging that, yes, it's the same thing with the Christ Christians, you guys. Like, if you're a Christian, do you, don't you think that if God didn't have, if God did not want Lucifer here on planet Earth, he wouldn't just get rid of him? <laughs> I mean, it's like, okay, you know what I mean? Like, like well, yeah, it's a purpose. Like, 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 almighty, right? It's like, yeah. what? Yeah. You know? He's a, there's a purpose. Like he's yeah. keeping them around for a reason. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. 
you, you have to acknowledge these things. And, you know, and I think that people would be better off. Okay. So like all these people are waiting and just, they're playing the safe side, but what is the safe side? Like, well, well, you know, everybody's playing the what if card. And what I mean by that is, well, let me just kind of go all this one way, just in case on the other side, you know, it didn't end up working out because I didn't. You don't know that. You don't know that. And you have to ask yourself, like, if you, by utilizing only embracing one side of yourself, how is that literally working out for you? How is your life? How is your family? How is your finances? How is, how is your, how is your real spirituality? Are you really blocked by, by embracing it? You have everything to gain here in this lifetime, because let's be real about this. You know, we can watch and talk to a million people all day long, but unless you're over there and there trying to figure it out, none of us right here really ultimately know where we're, what bucket we're going to end up in. Right. So, yeah. you know, why not try to really have a harmonious existence where you get your cake and eat it too. You love and you live, right. Yeah. You know, you prosper and you do good things for people, but you also get to do some amazing, amazing things that, you know, just get to the edge of things you explore. You know, you can't, you can't just explore life in a, in a bubble. You know what I mean? Right. What are you going to do? You know what I mean? You're never going to, you're never going to know the beauty of things. Well, it's a facade, you know, with the law of one, when uh, the law of one was written um, and, and then later the Cassiopeians were, were channeled um, for 30, 30 years now and they've never been wrong once. And they talked and they've asked them a lot of questions about the law of one and the Cassiopeian. So the one thing that that raw was very upset about with the law of one is that the people who were writing it did not ask enough about the dark side. Yeah. And raw can't, you know, they, they can't interfere with our free will. So they, the Cassiopeians only responded when asked, was there something missing from the law of one? And they said, yes, they wanted you guys to ask more about the dark side because there are things you can learn from the dark side there are things that and i'm not talking about guys we're not talking about hurting children we're not talking about that's that's a totally different level we're talking about just the little the the the, the stuff the side of you that's messy and the side of you that's selfish and the side of you that is in survival mode which is what the darkness is working off of and i will tell you something super interesting you know my friend jesse's a boater who's i think she's going to do the panel um she told me something off camera once which i have tried to announce to the world because i thought it just clicked with me she said, you know, when you're experiencing spiritual attacks, which honestly, you guys, when you're on the initiate's path, when you are on the initiate's path of light, the law of one talks about the, this, the Emerald Tablets talk about this, the Yoga Sutras talk about this, all these cultures say the same thing. When you, the closer you are to truth, the closer you are to the light, the more you're going to get attacked by the darkness. Yeah. Why is that? Many reasons. Well, think about strength training. The stronger you get, you got to up your weights, don't you? Yeah, you do. So the more you, you get in the light, the more that resistance got to be upped anyway to get you even stronger. So that's one aspect of it. Now, Jesse told me something interesting. When we are, when I pray at night, I always tell, um, for protection, I always say, I revoke, I revoke any permission that the darkness thinks it has to use my shadow side against me. So to, so if we're not acknowledging that, I struggle with that. My part of my shadow side would be I have major anxiety. I have major anxiety, P CPTSD. I get panic attacks a lot. That's part of my shadow. If I'm not acknowledging that and openly working on that, openly talking about it, if I'm hiding it, then the darkness is going to manifest. Even yeah. so, so I was like, so even in the occult, you guys, even in <laughs> the occult, because she grew up in the occult, they know this. Yeah. They know this. So what can we learn from that? Again, it's it's not the actions of the occult that you're learning. It's the information. And, 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 and I will tell you, life's more fun this way, too. It really is because you do get to learn, learn these things. And, you know, I was talking to a friend of mine the other day. It's a quote unquote light worker, worker. And, you know, there was this whole like, well, you know, if you wake up at three o'clock in the morning every night, it means someone's getting at you. No, I think if you wake up at three in the morning, it's like you're not letting any of the dark in. How the hell do you sleep if the lights are always on? Right. So you got to yeah. sometimes turn it off. Right. Yeah. You know, you don't sleep with the lights on you yeah. and then expect to have that. You know, you have to be able to just go to the places when you dream or you astral travel. Those are those can be beautiful experiences. And, you know, little, you know, and if you can if you can adapt to it and go through it, like almost like a mushroom experience, if you would, while you're sleeping, I guess, in some one, but I don't know. But I, you, know, I lost it, yeah. you, know, you see some weird shit sometimes, right? When you're yeah. out there, right? And, you, you know, it's, it's uh, but but you go with it because you get to see these and these little 
you know, from my experience, right? This is I can only speak of my my experiences. You know, there's these beings, there's these things. They they throw things at you, and in that in that vibrational place where where you're at, that's where you can determine. It helps you to determine: do I do I is this person that was you know maybe kind of leading me down a different direction, throwing shit at me, or is this the way I go? But at least you kind of get it at a different way. You have to be able to get. You have to allow yourself to learn these things so you know what to use, and that's the. That's the thing that'll be so healthy. That's the thing that'll have you have, in my opinion, um, just a much better existence in where we're at right now. So when you live in the present, you're manifesting, you're protecting, you're 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 creating abundance in your life. You're healthy because you are looking at both sides. Because you know you look, you think about it. I mean, I think a lot of the the physical aspects of yourself like you know your 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 desire to be intense i mean think about it when you're in a gym or whatever like that you're bringing out the depths of wherever you go to you go yeah. to these places and like you said and i think that the biggest part of this challenge is always going to be disassociating what the word dark actually means it's not about running over people with your car or, or kidnapping or kids going to bohemian grove that. it's not about no it's 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 you no well the thing is too jay when you're we're talking about that like when when you can't be authentically in your truth of who you are, like really acknowledging the good and the bad, you are so easy to take advantage of. Totally. So yeah. easy to be led astray. The more the more you can settle into yourself and acknowledge all parts of yourself, the better of a person you become because you're able to practice discernment on yourself and to control your own mind, but you also are not led astray as much. You're also able to stand independently in your own autonomy too, because you're comfortable. You're comfortable with with uh, with your own demons. You're comfortable. What's that joke? I cuddle up with my demons. Like you know, it's it's people say you know it's you know I'm so spiritual. Well, demons are spirits too. Be more specific. You know, like when you're yeah. when you understand that there is the yin and the yang. There is this polarity. And I actually I just finished filming a video before we saw a. Uh, uh, signed on Jay where I talked about the Cassiopeians talk about in our DNA you know a lot of us who are here on the planet have I know myself specifically I have on both sides of my family I have Freemasonry um master masons I want my great great grandfather was like a worshipful warlock whatever wizard whatever that means high up in Freemasons they were probably doing some shady shit however they learn stuff they learn you know, stuff practice and guess what that DNA is in me and for many of the people who are watching right now who have that lineage, we all do. I think most of us do, actually. The action that your grandparents or your great-grandparents took, you're not responsible for their actions. They're, they're responsible. You're only responsible for your actions. But the information, that's there. I, I And that's in you. How are you going to utilize that? How are you going to rest into that and use what you've inherited? Use And that's, I was saying, Jay, you know, my study of the yoga sutra is like when we look at the soul and we look at the body as i said humaning as a verb we're here doing an action of learning of, of 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 understanding and refining ourselves when we look at like like if we're going into appalachia or the rocky mountains you're not going to drive a city car in appalachia you're going to get a truck or a four-wheel drive because that's what's built to handle that terrain so when we when our soul is coming to earth and our soul knows what it what what kind of a ride it wants to be on it's going to pick the dna it needs to have that experience so i'm asking all of our friends watching if you're someone who's emailed me because you're so embarrassed because you have freemasonry in your in your lineage why are you embarrassed your soul your soul designed that because yeah. in your dna again we're not talking about what they did in those lodge meetings we're not talking about alleged pain they caused others that's not what we're talking about we're talking about what they learn what is the magical occult information they learned that is now in your dna that integrated into them and can now you have a choice to use that the way that you see fit to use that whether for good or for bad and so i think that's why it's also important to study the occult because so many of us have that in our dna and if we ignore that part of ourselves we're just going to have to keep coming back to earth and bring this over again Totally. And the other thing about it is, too, is if you don't explore that side of yourself, you don't learn to forgive yourself because that side of yourself gives you the courage to forgive yourself and move on in your life. Again, you know, getting back to what I was saying earlier is like, you know, we're all going to do something that we regretted or shouldn't have done in this life. Right. So it's that what it is. 
but it's that side. It's it's a one side that says, no, you hold on to that guilt. So you never do that again. You're, you're, you'll be a good little boy. You know what I mean? And, you know, you sit down and you don't, you just keep your mouth shut. You'll be a good little boy. It's the other side to be like, ah, shit, why do that? I mean, let me not do that again. And you'll learn from that. Yeah. But that's the kind of side that allows you to leave that because y- you, you see, if you don't, my experience, I was wanting to say that, right? Is you don't, um, if you don't do that, you start to live life with regrets. You start to live, you, you start to never, never forgive yourself. Um, and, and you can't live a proper existence like that. When you, when you're in balance and you work towards balance, i.e. being a gray worker, yeah. you know, is that, uh, <laughs> I think Sean's like, you need to make a t-shirt. Buy the, I'm a gray worker. Say, buy the t-shirt, buy the t-shirt, buy Bryce, Bryce, I have a link here. We'll give well, you a coupon code. I'm a gray for, worker. <laughs> text, uh, text Jay for gray, uh, for coupon code for gray worker t-shirt. <laughs> Um, but yeah, you know what I mean? If it's like, if you just, you know, you, that's the thing. Cause a lot of people hang on to so much guilt and that comes from not getting to where they were and what caused that to begin with. Look, if you just know what you did and you learn not to do it again, that's it. I mean, you're out, you tag out. Don't worry about it. It's done now. You nothing you can do other than learn from it, learn from that experience that that place will teach you is the best teacher for you to learn how to operate. So you yeah. have to go there. You have to go to those places. If you don't go to those places, you're not going to learn how to navigate to life properly. You're going to get stuck in a rut and have to come back. Yeah, it's a, it's a loop. It's a, it's a hell loop. That's going to be your hell loop. That's the Sam scar. Yeah. That's, 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 you, you've got to, it's so interesting Jay too, because I, I follow this channel called true hidden crime and I love it because it's a husband and wife team. And the husband is a forensic psychologist and he's fascinating to listen to him talk about these different big crimes and like what causes people to do what they do. And he's talked a lot about, they just ca- captured the um, Long Island serial killer. Yeah, and yeah. his daughter had a bunch of artwork where she had drawn like horrific things. And so this guy did this press conference of a court accusing his daughter of being involved. And the forensic psychiatrist said, whoa, 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 whoa. First of all, first of all, she wasn't even alive for some of this stuff. Second of all, he said, when I deal with children who come from families where there's extreme violence or, or dysregulation, a lot of times children will draw very horrific pictures because that's their way of trying to make sense of what they're experiencing and children are able to access that children typically are able to kind of like process and then draw in order to try to comprehend it doesn't mean anything it just means that they're trying to process the darkness it's just when we get to adulthood i think we start to try to cut that off because we think it and that's the difference between guilt and shame right guilt means i'm a good person who did a bad thing shame means i'm a bad person right we don't want shame Guilt is healthy because guilt is what we go, ooh, I don't like the way that that happened. Yeah. I feel responsible and I made that person cry. And I think I feel bad for that. And that's not who I am. And I'm going to take that. I'm going to learn from it so I don't respond that way again. You know, and, and the more, and it's it's interesting because I've been covering like the Borgias on my channel, which the Borgias are like the most salacious family that ever lived. They were popes and, you know. You've got some cool shit on your channel. I love that. Uh, well, it's <laughs> interesting. Great topics. Well, it's great. It's, it's, well, I always say history ain't nothing but gossip. That's all history is, is it's gossip. But we look at some of the stuff that, like, I was talking about Lucrezia, the daughter who lived in the 1400s, 1500s. And I'm like, we have empathy for her because the more we are able to sit in our own darkness, the more we have empathy for other people. Yeah. And that's what changes things. Vigilante violence doesn't change things. Painting things black and white means nothing. That's actually a personality disorder. That's borderline personality disorder if you paint things black and white. Right. And that's yeah. one of the most worst personality disorders to have for the person. So we see things in gray and we're able to discern and have empathy. That doesn't mean that criminals don't have to pay justice back. That doesn't mean that we let yeah. people who have done horrific things just go out to society. No, we have a system of of law and order, but we can still have empathy. I can know that President O, I won't say his full name, was a bad dude, is a bad dude. I know, but I can have empathy for the little boy that was hurt. Right, right, right. Yeah, no? you're absolutely right about that. I mean, you may not quote unquote like the person or think, you know, they're maybe a little bit, you know, not right. You know what I mean? But uh, at the end of the day, yeah, you know, they're having their own experience. You have to have empathy for them and realize that they're going, you don't know what's going on to their stream of consciousness and that's it. And then listen, and I tell you, uh, you know, from both sides of the, the aisle, if you would, the, the the religious to the extremist to the to the, to the spiritualist, you know, you know, it's 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 almost like a Democrat and Republican anymore. It's like yeah. the same thing, just a different little bit of Things different the same words. Weird. It's like yeah. it's like 
hey, wait a minute, isn't that being said over there? <laughs> you know I, mean? I mean, look at the black and white issue. Black people and white, my friend is black and she's a, she's a chemistry teacher too. And she's like, you realize that black and white people are the most genetically connected out of all the races? But yet, it, we're, it, it's wild, but the way that but we're all coming from, anyway, um, you guys, and that's what, and that's what I love about, you know, Caleb, uh, one of the, I think we're trying to get him to speak too. He's great with Shanti. He talked about the things we can learn from the occult. Our teeth are crystals. He, he grew up in the Arcane. Oh, wow. He cool. talks about, so we're learning all these things. And that's why this panel is going to be so cool because there's so much you can learn about yourself from this hidden knowledge, right? There's so much. And when you start to take your own power back, information is power, information protect, or knowledge is power, knowledge protects, and knowledge is infinite. It's never ending. And so there's so much with these people who survived the darkness, survived the occult, the people who researched it, they can talk about their experiences. And therefore, what you take in and discern, you can bring into your own experience and learn. And you don't have, and guess what, you guys? The good news is you don't have to go through the hell that they went through as kids. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah you really to don't. learn from their experiences. You know, I, you know, I, I look, just rule of thumb for me is always going to be this as, you know, what I know when I'm doing something right or wrong at this stage in my life. I do. You know what I mean? And it's like, you know, so, you know, work on what you're doing right muster up whatever you need to do keep things in balance but explore it and have a good time with it because you know what you don't know where it's going to lead you and you know and, and and again especially if you're in today's world which is you know it's different right it's just well, i guess it's just evolving like anything else right but it is what it is we just have to be stronger you can't be you can't be you have to see things coming you know what i mean you have to see coming from inside of you you have to see things coming from outside of you you have to be crystal clear aware and there's no other way to do it other than go to those places to find out and learn about them you know what i mean yep. you have to go, go to those inside. places you don't go, go to those places and you know you don't meet that you don't meet the demon side of you or the devil side of you or however you want to recall it to see what's where what to do so when they do come up you know, you'll know to like go away. You know what I mean? You, you, you it's, 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 it's going to be a bad day. <laughs> You're going to get stuck on a car. Well, it's interesting. I'll, I'll look at there's some one point I wanted to bring up and we can end on that and then talk about again, the details, but you guys, I tell my students this all the time, your darkness, your weakness, that's actually your greatest strength. Yeah. Um, I, and I'll, I'll, again, I'll use this in the physicality of the body as a metaphor back bending. When I first started practicing, Back bending was really hard for me and I had back surgery. There was a lot of, I punched a teacher coming out of a deep back bend, you know, in Ashtanga yoga and you know, India based yoga, yoga from India, you have to like catch your ankles. It's extreme and it's a stomach opener is what it's doing, which we have a lot of energetic information. And over these 18 years, not only have I become by facing that, by, by being in that discomfort and just working on it every day and, and feeling the emotions that were coming up in my physicality, the darkness, the tears throwing up sometimes. I've now become an extremely strong backbender. And guess guess what the best thing I teach is? Backbending. I'm known mm -hmm. as one of the best backbending teachers because I embraced it. I I I I leaned into it. I leaned into that side of me that was really and that's and I so I under so now I understand it at a deeper level. The things that my hips are super open. Throughout my life behind my bed by my head was never a big deal for me. So I'm not really that great of a of a hip opener teacher because that was but backbending, because I, I had to learn it, I had to lean into it, I had to look at it and be in that place of discomfort, of mental focus, is what ended up becoming the strongest part of me. So with that being said, the parts of you, if you struggle with betrayal, jealousy, abandonment, whatever, anger issues, and you actually lean into that and work on it, it's going to reveal a side to you that's actually the strongest side of your personality. Yeah. If you spend your whole life not acknowledging that, you're never going to actually know what a shame that is to spend your whole life not actually seeing the greatness in your potential because you were too afraid to look at it. Yeah. You know, there's a saying in business that people, uh, people, some very successful people say it's keep your friends close and your enemies closer. You know what I mean? Yep. And you know what I mean? Keep that, keep the people that are dark to you, if you would keep them closer. So you understand when they're coming. These are what very successful people. I mean, these are the, these are the disciplines and it does not mean they're bad. These people, you know, it's just what you do with it all, but we can go round and round on that and maybe on yeah. another show, I imagine that, but Hey, you know, Bryce, thanks as always for having me in your world and Absolutely. very therapeutic discussion for me. So thank you for Absolutely. that. Absolutely. I, I think it's time for it. I'm so, I'm, I'm, I'm between you and BJ and all of our friends watching, I think I, I, we've, I've got the coolest audience. I think we're all very interested in the same things. And I got such cool, really fun, really funny. 
I hate calling on my audience members. That sounds, my friends watching, they're hysterical people. I've gotten to know a lot of you guys. You guys make me laugh every day, but they're very, everybody watching is pretty grounded and probably is appreciating this, this conversation a lot. And I just, um, so with this, you guys, I, I would love, if you guys want more of this conversation where, you know, this is, I think how we move forward, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm sick of the truth. I'm going to be honest. I'm fucking sick of the tr truth or community. The truth or community to me is nothing different than, than mainstream media. It's just two polarized sides of the same beast. It's, it's vigilante violence on both ends. Feelings aren't facts. And I'm ready for us to find that gray again so we can actually move forward and use yeah. lessons here on this earth that we're supposed to be, that are here for, the reason why God's allowed this to be here is because there's information there for us. There, there's yeah. keys to this. And so, um, and so you guys, with this, again, with this panel, we've got some, some great speakers to hear their stories to take the information they're going to give you to to work it into your own life so that you can be a better person and we can evolve forward. I don't want to come back to this loop. I'm done with this yeah. karmic loop. I'm ready to move to the next destination, wherever that is. And so, um, again, so the link to, at this point, Gnostic's completely open and free, you guys. So you can enjoy all yeah. of the entertainment, all of the videos on there by following the link below. Um, that's usually my first thing is Gnostic TV. Now, Jay, for people who want to uh, get a ticket to this panel, what's the discount we're doing now? Is it like- We're gonna do 50% discount for people who wanna go ahead and purchase it in advance. And it's, it's already low price anyway, but go ahead and text me the event and yeah. I'll send you a code on this, okay? So we'll send the code so you can pre-register for it. That's being built out. It's gonna be amazing. It's gonna be exciting. So just I'm definitely- I'm excited. And do we're, we're, and doing, we're working a part of it this Saturday, guys. We're already putting it together with some of our hosts. I've got some stuff this Saturday with one of our hosts that we're gonna be starting to put this together. So these are early bird sa sales. So 50% off, you text J event. Again, his phone number will be, be right down below in the description box. I bet some of our funny friends are going to text you gray worker though. I could just see it now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You could, yeah, I'm, I'm going to come up with a gray worker thing. But listen, I just to let everybody know. So when you do think about it, because obviously the first thing, well, how much is the event anyway? The event's 33 bucks as it is. So when you, te when you text the code, you end up paying what? 33 divided by two, half yeah. of 33. That's what you get. Super cheap. So Super cheap. That's uh, that's what's going to happen. You'll learn a lot about yourself in this amazing panels that you know you and Shanti are bringing together. So thanks for doing that. That's a great service. So and thank you everybody. Appreciate you having me on. Price is I'm always. I'm excited. I'm excited, guys. I can't wait. Um, if you have any questions before, if you want to ask them in the comment section too, guys, or you can just text Jay. Um, I can't wait for those T-shirts. We definitely have to have T-shirts that say I'm a great worker. And everybody heard it here. It's documented. I'm a gray worker. I'm not, I ain't no light worker. That's right. I'm a gray worker. Gray too. worker. <laughs> my, I will say my boyfriend always says they're, they're no white hats. They're only gray hats. So, sure. so, so, all right, you guys, we'll talk to you soon. Bye, everybody.